place where we don't appeal to the letter of the law, we mock it mercilessly. And speaking of the law, New York is a treasure trove of ridiculous edicts, some that are so asinine and easy to break. We had to try. Take a look. Wow, look at this. 1025, a moral conundrum. If I find more than $10 on the street in New York, I have to report it to the police and actually take the found money to a police station. But if I just leave the quarter, I can go buy some undies at Victoria's Secret. Woo, here we go, three card Monte. Put three cards down, one of them yours. Who wants to play? Step right up and play three card Monte. I couldn't even play three card Monte if I wanted to. If Ken stepped up with a dollar, I could get cuffed and shuckled and sent to the tombs just for playing three card Monte. In New York City, it is illegal to face a window and have a puppet show. So we've got our backs to the window. We're not breaking the law. However, if we turn around, puppets down. Whether it's playing three card Monte, having a puppet show in a window, or picking up ten dollars and twenty five cents. There's a law for that. There are a lot of dumb laws, not just in New York City, probably where you live, too. I obviously didn't break any laws, but it does bring up the question, why do we have so many laws in so many places? Who benefits and how do you lose? Jeff Rose is his senior attorney at Institute for Justice. Jeff, welcome to The Independence. Great. Thanks, Kennedy. Glad to be here. Well, I'm glad to have you. So why do we have so many laws? From, from whence do they spring? Well, they don't spring from anywhere good, that's for sure. And we've got so many laws because there are a bunch of busybodies who have an agenda of control for its own sake and a bunch of people who stand to benefit financially when laws get written, and that's where they all come from. Ah, so in the uh, case of a three-card Monte law, who stands to benefit from that? Well, you know, this is a classic, this is probably a classic example of the, of the Baptist and bootlegger syndrome in which you have people who run casinos or run legal gambling or run legal forms of entertainment and they don't like competition from three card monte or from anyone else so you think that um maybe legitimate gambling establishments or the lottery in new york state they didn't like hustlers on the street swindling uh kind onlookers and taking their dollars away by the way the one guy who did actually play with me we couldn't play for cash he totally guessed this card Yep, well, whatever the explanation is, it's going to be something like that. So look who's making money, and that'll tell you why an economic regulation exists. Now, Jeff, is there really any downside to having a proliferation of these laws if they're not being enforced? You'll find really antiquated laws against hunting camels uh, in some part of Arkansas. Is that a problem? Yeah, you know, it's a problem because it's just ridiculousness. It's government as sort of Kafka-esque absurdity. And so they have all of these ridiculous laws, but these funny laws conceal a really unfunny truth, which is that there are far too many laws, and for a free people, it's like walking through quicksand, and the quicksand is getting deeper and deeper. I mean, the, the most worrisome thing for me is you have a, a body of people who are governed by legislatures and city councils and governors who just keep keeping laws upon them, and they become complacent and complicit. That's right. And it's a one-way ratchet. I mean, the government really doesn't get rid of these laws. And the laws come from special interests. They write them. They agitate for them. They, uh, you know, lobby the legislature and they have their, their lobbyists do their thing. And that's where they come from. They just build up. They don't go away. Jeff, is there some uh, benefit to having sort of a federalist system? Aren't we allowing for experiments in nanny state laws in New York while people in Houston can do without them? Well, I suppose, but, you know, the, the whole concept of, of, you know, the different states as laboratories of democracy only makes sense when there is a basic understanding of liberty. Because otherwise you get what you just said, which is laboratories of nanny statism. It is the, because right now we have government whose limits are essentially only the creativity of the human imagination. If there is a law, someone out there is trying to get it written. And that's why what we need is an engaged judiciary taking the Constitution seriously so that people don't have to obey these ridiculous laws. I agree. Repeal, repeal, repeal. And Jeff, if you saw me on the street, would you play Three Card Monty? Huh. As long as it wasn't for money, because I have a feeling you'd rip me off. That's right, baby. Thank you very much for coming to the Independence. Appreciate it. You betcha. All right, see you again. Are you judgmental against obese people, and does it make you sick?